fellow babies. Uh, thank you for joining us on Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. Uh, hope you are watching real time as a Patreon patron, or we are watching as an Amazon Prime member who has figured out how to link their Prime account to their Twitch Prime account. Our question for the day comes from Patreon from Mark Spellman. Gaming stocks have been flat or down for basically two years. Have the fundamentals not improved? Why do you think they're struggling to grow? Uh, okay, that's a good question. Um, you know, the gaming is a, a, a upwardly sloping business that has cyclicality to it, meaning that the gaming demographic grows and consumption of games grows, but it doesn't grow in a straight line. There's some downturns and upturns, and the the stocks reflect an expectation of future earnings. Um, so they've been flat because people have been uncertain about what's going to happen. And, and a history lesson, you know, back in 2010, 11, uh, they, they hit kind of all time highs and then they dropped for a couple of years and they dropped because investors were convinced that mobile gaming was going to replace console gaming. And I'm not kidding. I had a an investor pull out an iPad and show me FIFA on his iPad. And he goes, why would I buy FIFA? Look, this game is the same. And I said, yeah, other than that there's six players on a side. And the guy said, well, how many people are on a soccer team? And I went, 11. You know, and the guy didn't know, and he's telling me it's the same thing. And then he, then his other dumb question was, well, why would anybody play the mobile game? And I go, because the screen is small and you can't control 11 people. You know, like, of course you play a mobile game with six players because, you know, it feels right. But I'm telling you that, you know, so the stocks all went down then. And then the console cycle came in and we started getting in-game transactions and more DLC and the stocks ripped. And then they, they actually overshot a couple of years ago because... The publishers were all talking about esports being the next big thing, and it hasn't really been a big money maker. And they were talking about streaming, meaning their own subscriptions like EA all uh, EA Origin Access, which has not been a big thing. And they all talked about, you know, that they're doing so much revenue from mobile. So you hear Take Two talk about recurrent consumer spend, and Ubisoft talk about player recurring investment. And you know, it turns out that hasn't been a big deal and you know they're going to probably start to appreciate again when investors recognize that you know that the game publishers are participating in all segments of the value chain so the the truth is that there are different stages of development on mobile you know activision has a couple billion in mobile just from king um take two's only got a couple hundred million in mobile they're at different stages of development and free to play so they all approach it differently you know take two does gosh probably six seven hundred million in free to play built into paid games like grand theft auto online and red dead online and nba that you have to buy the game first but then you can spend money in the game on an ongoing basis and that's not really free to play because you had to buy the game but you know imagine if gt online was free as opposed to Apex Legends, which is totally free, and so you know people have uh, they understand that that c could grow, or Call of Duty Warzone, which is totally free, so we can see how that could grow. So there's free to play, you know, desktop and console. There's mobile, that they're participating in varying degrees, and you know then we get into is esports actually going to be a thing, and it could be. Uh, I don't, I think it's an advertising model. And I think you got to have the game that people want to watch in order for it to become a big deal. But frankly, I think Blizzard might have some of the games we want to watch. I actually think a StarCraft esports league would be awesome if they could build a new StarCraft for, for this decade that people want to play. Um, and we're going to get you know new mobile properties like Diablo Immortal that people are going to play. And that could, that could kill it in China if China ever opens back up to U.S. games. Uh, so the big thing I think though on the horizon is streaming of games without a console. And so Google Stadia does that. The business model is just stupid and nobody signed up for it. Uh, Amazon, I think, is going to do it. And I think when Amazon says, look, we're just Walmart in the cloud. You want to play FIFA? 60 bucks. Thank you very much. You don't need a console. That'll work. 
So I think the gaming stocks are positioned to really, really appreciate in the next five years if I'm right about Amazon offering streaming, and I think I'm right. Um, so they haven't moved because of uncertainty. I think a lot of investors are just convinced that you know gameplay is moving away from console games and toward free-to-play games like Fortnite, which is a private company, uh, League of Legends, which is quasi-private, but both of those companies have Tencent as a big investor, um, and you know PUBG, you know things that are just not U.S. publishers. And I think investors are going to be proven wrong when you see games like Apex and Call of Duty Warzone and Diablo Immortal and you know others start to capture back some share. So frankly, I think the publishers are really good investments here. I've got buys on all of them, like them a lot. And uh, I think that they're just struggling to convince investors that there's value beyond this year. Um, you'll see them take off. They actually all held up really well in the market downturn. So, you know, we'll see if that continues. Thank you, fellow babies, for watching The Pactor Factor. But if you're watching on YouTube, what the hell is wrong with you? You can either be a sifted patron on Patreon for two bucks a month, or you can link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account, which is really easy. And let's be real, if you have YouTube, you have an Amazon Prime account. So follow the instructions below and link it. Either way, we're gonna get two bucks. One's gonna cost you, one's gonna cost Twitch. Either way, you get the content real time when it's released daily.